I'm Scully. And I'm the mole. And this is Scully and the Mole Crack the Case. Eyes. And cousins. <laughs> when a crime's been committed, we use real life police procedures to find the bad guys. And girls. Right. And girls. <laughs> Video call from Councilwoman Piper? It's a councilwoman. Wait, what? <clears throat> Do I look good? Yeah, you're fine. Okay. okay. Scully and the mole, I need your help. What seems to be the problem? Can't you see? No, uh, uh no, we um, can't. Your <laughs> video's turned off. Oh, hold on. I've been glitter bombed. <laughs> <laughs> glitter bombing is when someone anonymous mails a package to your house. You open it, and bam! Glitter explodes everywhere. Glitter is annoying. People will be telling me I have red and blue glitter in my hair for the next year. No, it, it's fine. You're, you're very sparkly. Ooh. <laughs> it's not funny. Please find out who did this to me and why. You got it. This case will give us a chance to really shine. Here are the facts. Thursday, 4.30 p.m., Councilwoman Piper receives a mysterious letter in the mail. She opens it, and bam! She's covered in glitter. Why would someone want a glitter bomb Piper? Why? Piper is running for re-election. Maybe the glitter is a political statement. Oh, yeah. No! We are very popular today. <laughs> you are detective? Yeah. I'm Lucas. I come from Austria for high school. I have problem. I'm covered in sparklies. You've been glitter bombed. Glitter? But why? Well, whoever did it is probably unhappy with you for something you did. But who would do such a thing? I just moved here. We don't know, but we promise we'll find out. But why would someone want to glitter bomb Lucas? Why? Lucas came to America from Austria with his twin brother Wolfgang. Lucas says that Wolfgang is his nemesis. He hates him. That definitely makes Wolfgang our first suspect. What am I doing here? But why would Wolfgang glitter bomb Piper? Can he even vote? Are we sure that whoever bombed Lucas also bombed Piper? I mean, maybe it's a coincidence. Maybe there are two glitter bombers. Uh, maybe there's- Ah, uh, okay, okay. Let's analyze the letters. Right. They have different colored inks, but the same stamp. Yeah, yeah. And they were both sent from the 13th Street Post Office. They have similar handwriting, but how can we be sure? Well, I just called the person to help us out. My friend Marcus, a professional graphologist. Hi! Oh! Graphologists analyze handwriting samples. Did you know that no two people on Earth have the same handwriting? So if we both write the word butthead... <laughs> Scully, do it! Butthead? Ah, oh, fine. I see almost 100 differences from the way you both form letters to how quickly you write to the spaces between letters. Huh, but what about the glitter bomb letters? Are they from the same person? You see how the letter S is the same on both letters? Yes, yeah, so is the number seven. Boulevard is also spelled incorrectly in the same way. Yeah, it's a hard word to spell. Eh, it's not that hard. With all these unique similarities, 
I can confidently say that the same person sent both glitter bombs. Yes! Wait, there has to be something that links Councilwoman Piper to Lucas. Wait, wh where were they before the attack? <gasps> Let's, Let's go, go to, to the tape! tape. Okay, where did she talk about this? It's earlier. Where? Um, back, back, back. You're going too uh, far. Where is it? Oh, there! <laughs> well, I went shopping. I bought a little cat and two adorable bottles of perfume. One for me, one for my cat. <coughs> then I bought a book about oboes and picked up my special latte at Cafe Wakey Wakey. <laughs> Ooh. Well, what about enemies? Anyone who might send her a glitter bomb? I got 99% of the vote in the last election. Everybody loves me, especially my cat. <coughs> Let me stop it! <laughs> mm. Uh, now, let's hear Lucas's day. I grabbed my mail from my mailbox on my way to school. I ran a stop sign and got the ticket. Oopsie. That made me late for class. We had the pop quiz on ancient Egypt. Then I picked up Wolfgang at the coffee shop on 12th Street where he met his study group. While I was waiting, I opened up my mail and I was bombed. Red and blue sparklies everywhere. Hmm. Do you think his brother Wolfgang had something to do with this? If Wolfgang was doing glitter bombings, I would know. We sleep in the same room. There would be glitter everywhere. Besides, Wolfgang doesn't send angry letters, just angry emails. But why would the glitter bomber target Lucas and Piper? There has to be some connection. <gasps> Let's take some photos and see if they know each other. Great idea! and Piper doesn't know Lucas or Wolfgang. I'm stumped. Let's think this through. Now, we know they live or work near the 13th Street Post Office. We know they have access to a lot of red and blue glitter. We know they aren't the best spellers. I think we're getting closer. <laughs> Me too. Two calls at the same time? If it's a gymnastics coach hang up, I flip my last backflip and I'm not going back. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh! Help me! We big glitter bomb! More victims! More glitter? We'll tell you all about it on the next episode of Scully in the Mole Crack the Case. It's part two of case number 548, The Glitter Bomber. Let's review the facts. An anonymous person has been sending glitter bombs via letters in the mail to Piper, Lucas, and to new victims. We big glitter bomb! Miranda and Byron. Now, we know that all four letters were sent by the same person from the 13th Street Post Office. Ah, uh, but we don't have any credible suspects. Okay, okay. Let's review the tape and see what we found out when we interviewed Byron. Everyone knows me as the billionaire inventor of the iFart. Whoa, 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 whoa. The what? iFart. It's an app. Look. Oh. It beeps when you're near the butt of someone who just farted. Uh, uh, um, just ignore that. <laughs> uh, my true passion is riding my penny farthing. Whoa! A penny farthing? This guy's obsessed. No, a penny farthing. An antique bicycle with one big wheel and one little wheel. Oh. Okay, Byron, go off. 
Okay. Before the attack, I stopped at my local spot for some iced tea, then I rode home through the park where I saw two squirrels who were definitely kissing, and then when I got home, BAM! Little City! Does Byron have any enemies? No enemies, unless you count those farters I've exposed on my app! Hmm. What about Miranda? Ooh. It was a typical day at the salon. One guy wanted half his head, a rainbow, and the other half cheetah spots. I was way, way stressed, so I decided to get a chocolate lava muffin off of 12th Street, and then glitter ruined my day! Hmm, does Miranda have any enemies who might glitter bomb her? <laughs> my salon has thousands of five-star reviews. Oh, well, there was that one time I did give that guy a droopy mohawk by accident. Oops. No! This glitter bomber seems like they have beefs with everyone. A hairstylist, an inventor, a politician, and a foreign exchange student. But who is the glitter bomber? Maybe there are clues in the letters that we can't see. Let's get over to the lab. Right. Luminol is a chemical that, when combined with another chemical, hydrogen peroxide, causes certain fluids to glow in the dark. Tell them the fluids, Golly! <sighs> Gee, thanks. These fluids are certain chemicals that are found in blood, mm -hmm. pee, <laughs> poo, <laughs> and, and, and even some foods. Even if they've been cleaned or wiped away, they glow. This reaction is called chemiluminescence. to see what's on them. Hope it's not poop. But you're fine with pee? Horseradish. Horseradish. Horseradish, sometimes found in veggie dip, contains the same oxidizing agents as blood and pee. Wait! Our glitter bomber must have been eating while making their bombs. There has to be some connection between these victims. Maybe Lucas and Piper. No, Byron and Miranda. Let's get him in a group text. Great idea. each other. Now what? Hmm. I'm sorry. I wish I drank coffee. <gasps> coffee! Coffee? Cafe! Cafe! <gasps> All, All the, the victims, victims went, went to, to the cafe. cafe! Picked up my special latte at Cafe Wakey Wakey. Then I pick up Wolfgang at the coffee shop on 12th Street. I stopped at my local spot for some iced tea. So I decided to get a chocolate lava muffin off of 12th Street. Off of 12th Street. Off of 12th Street. Cafe Wakey Wakey is located on 12th Street. One block from the post office. Wait, wait, look up the menu on their website. I just told you, I don't drink coffee. I'll take a muffin though. Will you please just look it up? Okay. Look under lunch specials. Okay. Humpty hummus with chickpeas and horseradish. Wait, it, who touches hummus all day at Cafe Wakey Wakey? I don't know, someone who works there. <gasps> Do you think one of the employees at Cafe Wakey Wakey is the glitter bomber? Yeah. <gasps> Uh, 
I'm adding Nora the chef, Darius the barista, and Walker the manager to the suspects list. Delivery. It's a package. Scully, be careful. I think it's filled with <gasps> glitter. We'll tell you all about it on the next episode of Scully and the Mole. Crack the case. I'm Scully. And I'm the Mole. We're deep into case number 548, the Glitter Bomber. These are the facts. A Glitter Bomber is sending exploding letters full of glitter. And these are the victims, Byron, Miranda, Councilwoman Piper and Lucas, they're all customers of Cafe Wakey Wakey. Our suspects all work at Cafe Wakey Wakey. Nora the chef, Darius the barista, and Walker the manager. When we analyzed the letters, we found traces of the hump day hummus from Cafe Wakey Wakey. I also received this suspicious package, and I'm too scared to open it. Let's just do it. Ready? No. One, two. two. <gasps> Wait! What? Oops. Those are glitter samples I collected from different art stores. I sent them here so we could analyze them together. Are you kidding? What? I didn't feel like carrying them all, so I mailed them here. <sighs> Wait. Which stores are these from? There are no labels, it, it's all mixed up. I didn't think the packaging all the way through. I took these notes. They're from four different art stores. <gasps> but now all the glitter looks the same. <sighs> if only we had a microscope, then we can actually see the different types of glitter. <gasps> we do have a microscope. <gasps> to, to the, the lab. lab. When we zoom in, we see hexagonal glitter, shapes glitter, and confetti glitter. Just like the Glitter Bombers glitter. But do any of the stores you visited sell all of those different types of glitter? Hmm, only the Dirty Brush sells all three kinds of glitter. <gasps> Let's give him a call. Yeah. Dirty Brush, how can I brush you? Uh, uh, have any of your customers been buying a lot of red and blue hexagonal and shapes glitter? Yeah, yeah, maybe a little confetti glitter sprinkled in. Yeah. Uh, privacy is important for creative expression. We don't give out that kind of information. But we need this Besides, most of our valuable customers go by pseudonyms. Have a brush-tastic day. A pseudonym is a fake name some artists use to protect their identity, like MarkerGirl09. Who? No one. Now, let's interrogate our suspects on a video call. First, Walker the manager. Oh. Hi, Walker. We need to ask you a couple questions. Okay, but make it quick. I'm busy. <laughs> How long have you worked at Cafe Wakey Wakey? I've been the manager of Cafe Wakey Wakey for 10 years. I love our food. I eat hump day hummus every day. Mm. Do you think any of your employees could be a glitter bomber? Not sure. There's a high turnover. So turnovers? Yum! I could really go for an apple turnover right now. Or peach. Do you have peach? Please stop. Yeah. Turnover means there's always new employees due to um, hiring and firing. By the way, do either of you need a part-time job making lattes? We're kids. We can't work at your cafe. Right. Sorry. Have you seen any of these people? Oh. Oh, yeah. They're all very frequent customers. Mm -hmm. Do you like managing Cafe Wakey Wakey? As long as I get my vacation days for Thanksgiving, Fourth of July, and Mardi Gras, <laughs> I'm good. Okay. Let's talk to Nora, the chef. I cook all the food on the menu, including our most popular item, the hump day hummus. And I'm covered in it. Do you ever give out free food at the end of the day that nobody wants? No. Why? 
because I could really go for a muffin right now. I told you to eat lunch before this. I didn't have time. Sorry. Do these people look familiar? Mmm, the regulars. The worst is that Wolfgang kid. That, that's Lucas. Who? No, I'm pretty sure that's Wolfgang. He's always talking loudly on the phone and asking me to repeat the Wi-Fi password. Hmm. Do you like working at Cafe Wakey Wakey? No. Okay, um, let's talk to Darius, the barista. Do Walker and Nora know I'm talking to you? We just interviewed them. You ever had the hump day hummus? From time to time. A bit too much horseradish. Mm, I see. If a cafe has the ingredients to make a PB&J sandwich, but you don't see it listed on the menu, is it rude to ask them to make you one anyway? Um... Because I can come pick it up in an uh, hour. Uh, sorry. She's just very hungry. Listen, I'm not the glitter bomber. But I know who is. <gasps> who? I can't tell you. It's, it's too complicated. Recognize these people? Hmm. Red Blazer over there is always complaining about the music when we play hip-hop. Hmm, got it. Thanks. We need a way to link one of the suspects to the Glitter Bomber, but how? And did you think it was weird that both Nora and Darius kind of hate working at Cafe Wakey Wakey, but Walker, the manager, likes working there? You know, Walker just gives me bad vibes. Something about him just doesn't sit right. Then again, Nora and Darius both seem to kind of hate their customers. I mean, they probably love to see Lucas and Piper just covered in glitter. <laughs> yeah, and why did Nora call Lucas by his brother's name Wolfgang? Wouldn't the Glitter Bomber know the difference? Why? We're getting a call. Oh, it's our forensic scientist friend. Uh -huh. Scully in the mall, I have great news. What you got? I examined the Glitter Bomber's letters, and I believe it was sealed with saliva and not glue. Ew. You mean the Glitter Bomber licked all the letters shut? Yep. And that means they left behind some DNA in their spit. DNA is the genetic material unique to each of us. It determines things like eye color, height, the size of your nose, everything that makes you, you. So, in order to check the Glitter Bomber's DNA, we need to extract it from the envelope. Yes, which means using a chemical mixture on the envelopes to isolate the DNA. I went ahead and did that for you, but now you're gonna need some DNA from your suspects in order to see whose DNA matches with what we pulled off the envelopes. But how? Uh, you're the private eyes, not me. <sighs> How are we gonna get our suspects to give us their spit? Delivery! More glitter samples? <gasps> it's, it's from the Glitter Bomber! Ah! I guess we'll have to open it on the next episode of Scully in the Mole Crack the Case! Part four of case number 548, The Glitter Bomber. A glitter bomber has been targeting the customers of Cafe Wakey Wakey. Their sparkling personalities are starting to fade. Have you found anything, Scully and Mole? Where are you? Can't you see I'm still covered in glitter? Aren't you guys like detectives? Get it together! Now we know the crime is committed by a worker at Cafe Wakey Wakey, Nora the chef, Darius the barista, or Walker the manager. I definitely think it's Walker. But he said he likes managing Cafe Wakey Wakey. Why would he glitter bomb his own customers? Eh, just a hunch. We also found evidence of the cafe's signature horseradish hummus on the outside of the letters. Horseradish, horseradish. But unfortunately, every one of our suspects eats or cooks with the hummus every day. We know that the glitter bomber buys their glitter stash from the dirty brush, but the store's owner says they use a fake name. Most of our valuable customers go by pseudonyms. 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 A fake name we haven't figured out yet. 
We have the Glitter Bomber's DNA from the saliva on the envelope, but we don't have any DNA from our suspects. And you may be wondering why we're wearing protective gear. I'm wearing it because I just received this. It's a letter from the Glitter Bomber. And I'm wearing protective gear because it looks cool. <clears throat> okay, we have to open it. On three. Be careful. One, two. two. Oh, I'm covered in glitter. Oh, never mind. <sighs> hmm. No glitter. It's just a blank page. <gasps> Maybe it's written in invisible ink. Oh. Invisible ink is a great way to hypothetically, uh, possibly, potentially pass notes in class. Scully and the Mole do not endorse the passing of notes in class. But if we did, we'd say that most invisible ink is painted onto paper using baking soda, most commonly found in your parents' kitchen. Let's go to the lab. Now. The only way to reveal a message written in baking soda is to paint over the paper with an acidic substance such as... Stop drinking the lab materials! Sorry, it's just so good. <clears throat> have until the sun sets to crack this cipher? Or someone gets the glitter. Add a glamisier. What's a cipher? What the heck is an add a Am I even pronouncing that right? I don't know, but if we don't figure it out, another victim's gonna get sparkles floated. <sighs> I'll see if our friend who used to work at the FBI can help us later today. Oh yeah, our FBI friend. I forgot about her. While we wait for her to respond, let's visit the Cafe Wakey Wakey employee break room to covertly collect some saliva DNA from the workers. Good idea. We're looking for any objects that might have the employee spit on them so we can find their DNA. <gasps> let's check in those lockers! Water bottle. The label says Nora, so Nora the chef must drink out of it. Now, let's check Walker's locker. Ugh, gross. It's a bunch of used tissues. If Walker sneezed in those tissues, they definitely have his saliva DNA in them. Lollipops do not touch? He is definitely serious about his sweets. <gasps> Look, I have eaten one. Gross. Gross, but that means that this heavy lollipop will definitely have Darius's DNA. in the cryptology department where I decoded or decrypted all kinds of hidden messages. Any idea what a cipher is? A cipher is a code or a puzzle in which a symbol represents each letter of the alphabet. Hmm, a symbol. Like an emoji? Exactly. Each of those emojis represents a letter. Whoever sent that to you is sharing a secret message. It could be a confession. Could be. My biggest tip for solving a cipher is to look for punctuation. Hmm, I see a period and an equal sign. Then look for any repeating words. 
Waffle alien kiss ear yarn is twice. It must be the same word repeated. Repeating letters also help. If you can figure out what letter waffle is, you're on the right track. Bye. So, <laughs> if there's a W, then A. Waffle alien kiss ear yarn. Waffle alien kiss ear yarn? That must be <gasps> Wakey Wakey! wakey. alien, K equals kiss, E is ear, and Y is yarn, we can fill all those letters too! Whoa! We are so close! Yeah, we are! Walker? The manager from Kathy Wakey Wakey? Hi, Peg! Glitter bomb! I guess that means Walker's not the glitter bomber. But why would the glitter bomber bomb Walker? And what does the cipher say? We'll find out on the next episode of Scully in the Mole Crack, Crack the Case. We're back with part five of case number 548 the glitter bomber. Sending harassing letters in the mail, full of exploding glitter to unsuspecting victims. The suspects, Nora the chef, Darius the barista, and Walker the manager. Workers of Cafe Wakey Wakey who all touch the same hump day hummus found on the letters. Horseradish, horseradish. The victims, Piper the councilwoman, Lucas the foreign exchange student, Byron the inventor, Miranda the hairstylist, and now Walker the cafe manager. himself. Why would he do that? Meh, you're right. Our clues? We know the bomber buys their glitter at the Dirty Brush Art Store, but they buy it under a fake name. Most of our valuable customers go by pseudonyms. 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 Have a brush-tastic day. The glitter bomber sent us this weird cipher, or coded message, and we haven't been able to crack it yet. And we have the DNA of the glitter bomber, but we need to compare it to the DNA of the suspects. Let's, Let's go, go to, to the lab. lab. The lines on this graph are called alleles. Alleles are what makes up each person's DNA and makes them unique. Let's pull up Nora's DNA that we swabbed from her water bottle. Not a match. The alleles don't line up. Now, let's try Darius's DNA that we took from his lollipop. Partial match. Hmm, partial match? I think Darius is the glitter bomber. But Darius said he wasn't the glitter bomber, but knows who is. Yeah. Oh, let's put in Walker's DNA from his dirty tissue to rule him out. Yeah. Inconclusive. Inconclusive? This is not good. It's possible the DNA we grabbed wasn't enough. It's also possible that both Darius and Walker licked the envelopes. Let's call Darius to see what's up. Darius, we found your DNA on the Glitter Bomber's envelopes. Oh no, this is my worst nightmare. I don't know how my DNA got on those envelopes. If you know who the Glitter Bomber is, now would be a good time to fess up. I can't tell you, it's it's too risky. We'll have to assume it's you, unless you have an alibi. What if I help you collect evidence? Hmm. We're listening. I could wear a wire. Huh? What? It's a secret listening device. Ooh. Would you be willing to spend some time at the Dirty Brush Art Supply Store? You got it. Maybe Darius can help us figure out the fake names used by the glitter bomber at the Dirty Brush. Attical Mercy. Attical Mercy. Attical Mercy. What? It's a gibberish that was on the bottom of the cipher. I can't get it out of my head. My brain's all scrambled. Oh, Darius.
Darius is ready to go. Wow, that was fast. He's at the Dirty Brush wearing a microphone under his t-shirt. The sound is being transmitted straight to our headphones. Some CIA agents have been known to wiretap suspects for years. We don't have that kind of time. True. This is a really nice art store. Guys, I'm in. Can I help you, sir? That's the manager we talked to before on the phone. You cannot bring drinks into the store. We have a policy. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Let me finish. I'm beginning to think this was a bad idea. Yeah. I'm looking to buy red and blue glitter. Huh, sorry, we're sold out. One of our artists came in and bought it all last night. <gasps> Do you happen to know the name of that customer? That is confidential. Oh. No can do. Huh. Why does everybody want to know the name of Mr. Wednesday? <gasps> Mr. Wednesday! The name of the glitter bomber. We got it! Mr. Wednesday. Yeah? Wednesdays are hump days. Uh-huh. Hump day hummus. <gasps> the glitter bomber's got to be Nora the chef. But her DNA wasn't a match. Not a match. Nobody's was. Hmm. If Walker isn't a glitter bomber because he's a victim, and Darius isn't a glitter bomber because he helped us collect DNA, then that leaves Nora. We're getting a call. It's from Nora. Can't you read minds? I think it's just a weird coincidence. Scully, more. I'm sorry to bother you. I just thought you'd want to see this. <gasps> it's a footprint made of glitter. But whose is it? I bet you it's Mr. Wednesday's. But who is Mr. Wednesday? We'll find out the shocking conclusion to this mystery on the next episode of Scully in the Mole Crap the Case. We think we're minutes away from figuring out the identity of the Glitter Bomber. To recap, a Glitter Bomber has been sparkle exploding the regular customers and the manager of Cafe Wakey Wakey, Piper, Lucas, Byron, Miranda, and Walker the manager. And we have a major clue. It's a cipher written by the bomber in code, but we haven't been able to crack it yet. We also know the Glitter Bomber goes by the fake name, Mr. Wednesday. Why does everybody want to know the name of Mr. Wednesday? <gasps> Mr. Wednesday! The name of the Glitter Bomber. We got it! Our suspects are Nora the Chef, Darius the Barista, and we haven't ruled out Walker the Manager yet. <laughs> no! Darius did help us by wearing a wire, but his saliva DNA was found on the Glitter Bomber's letter. Partial match. So, he's still a suspect. Walker likes working at Cafe Wakey Wakey, and he also was the Glitter Bomber's last victim. I've been Glitter Bombed! <laughs> However, his saliva DNA was also found on the envelopes. Inconclusive. We didn't find Nora the Chef's DNA on the envelopes. Not a match. However, we did find Hump Day Hummus on the letters. Our Spanish. Our Spanish. But she just called us to show us a glittery footprint on the floor of Cafe Wakey Wakey. Scully, Mole, I'm sorry to bother you. I just thought you'd want to see this. A lot of clues. And not a lot of answers. I think it's gotta be Nora. <laughs> But Darius and Walker could have done it together. Yeah, and we still don't know why the suspects call Lucas by his twin brother's name Wolfgang. Let's go find that footprint. <laughs> that footprint has got to be around here somewhere. I'm not seeing it. Let's 
take a photo. timing, whoever made this footprint is probably the person who glitter-bombed Walker. Yeah. The analysis of footprints at crime scenes is called forensic podiatry. So, who wears these shoes? Unfortunately, Cafe Wakey Wakey employees all wear the same shoes in the same color from the same store. It's part of their uniform. But we can determine the approximate height of the glitter bomber by measuring the length of their shoe. The shoe is 11 inches long. The length of a person's foot is 15% of her or his height. By my calculations, the glitter bomber is about 72 inches tall. Or 6 feet. Are any of the suspects that tall? Hmm. <gasps> Walker's gotta be the glitter bomber! Are you sure? I mean, we haven't figured out the cipher yet, and we don't know what Mr. Wednesday is. True. Hmm. Do you think the first word of the cipher is Mr. Wednesday? Let's plug it in. is R, then that means that the last letter of the cipher is also R. Then lemon has to be L. <gasps> Mr. Mr. Wednesday equals Wakey Wakey Walker! If Walker is Mr. Wednesday, and Mr. Wednesday is the one who bought all the glitter found in the glitter bombs, <gasps> the, the glitter, glitter bomber is Walker! <laughs> Why would Walker glitter bomb himself? Probably to throw us off his scent. Time to make our case to the victims and suspects. Oh boy. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. After uncovering conclusive evidence, we believe the glitter bomber is... Walker! <gasps> <gasps> Sorry, oh. just doing it for effect. <laughs> no, I'm not. We solved the cipher! Alright, fine. I am the glitter bomb. These are the worst customers in the world, and I wanted to teach them a lesson. I thought you said you didn't mind working there. I said as long as I got off for Thanksgiving, Fourth of July, and Mardi Gras holidays where I, Mr. Wednesday, the parade float designer, get to showcase my art. And this year I didn't. A parade float designer! That's why he loves glitter! You! You always complain about the music we play. And you! You're always dragging your giant muddy bicycle inside, trekking mud everywhere. And you, you're always stealing the coffee stirs. And you, Wolfgang, you always make fun of my bad handwriting. Uh, I'm Lucas. Wolfgang is my twin brother. They told us his real name is Lucas. That's just a twin prank. We're always pretending to be each other. <laughs> it's not okay to be a bad customer. But that doesn't mean you should glitter bomb someone. I'm... I'm sorry. I think it's time I quit my job at Cafe Wakey Wakey and take some time to focus on my artistic pursuits. Not so fast. How did Darius' saliva DNA get on the letters? Oh. I... 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 I was trying to frame Darius, so I rubbed his half-eaten lollipops on the letter. <gasps> <gasps> How could you? That's really gross. Looks like this case is closed. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I'm Scully. And I'm the mole. We'll see you next time on... Delivery. Uh, what's that? Is, is that a letter from the Glitter Bomber? No, it's from me. Just a little card I wrote you. Sort of a thank you. 
Oh yeah? Huh. That, that's so nice. I can't believe you did that. <laughs>